no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? This Raiders mailbag is presented by Thrive Fantasy. If you want to go ahead and go play a little fantasy football and challenge me, go to chatsports.com slash props where you can get a 100% deposit match. So put down $100, you get 100% free. What does that mean? 100 bucks back. Chatsports.com slash props. I'm going to put that in the comments section and in the description. All right, Henry Gonzalez, what is Brian Edwards' role in this offense? He had so much hype at the beginning of the year. What can we expect for him from here on out? I think for him, he just needs to learn the offense a little bit. And remember what Tyrell Williams was? That's what the Raiders are hoping what Brian Edwards can become. Now, none of us anticipated Nelson Aguilar being as good as he was. I mean, I, I know I definitely didn't. I was excited about the signing, but not that much. For me, if Edwards can be a more reliable option in the red zone and next year be that guy where the Raiders decide, hey, we can move on from Tyrell, save $11.1 million because Brian Edwards can be that Tyrell Williams in the offense. Next question coming in from Icy underscore. Nate, how many sacks we get in this game? Matt Ryan got sacked eight times against the Saints. Now, the Saints are a lot better defense than the Raiders. They can also get after the quarterback better. I'm going to go with three, and that might be a little bit low, but until the Raiders are able to prove to me that they can actually get after the quarterback, I don't think it's fair for me to go over that. So for me, I'm going to say three sacks, but hey, if you guys want to let me know down in the comments section how many sacks the Raiders are going to get this week against the Falcons, I'd be okay with it. Daniel, if we meet Pittsburgh in the playoffs, you think we will win because Big Ben has never beaten the Raiders. Um, can we win? Absolutely. Now, the Steelers, though, they're a 10 of 0 for a reason. Number one in the power rankings, at least in mine, because they have been undefeated for a reason. That defense is legit, but anybody can win. I mean, like that that's the greatest part about the playoffs. But uh, I'm not really going to look into the whole Big Ben has never beaten the Raiders thing. I don't really think that matters. Super chat time from Spiritzer, 4757. Sign another linebacker if Littleton is still out. To be honest, I think one of the reasons why they brought in a guy like Vic Beasley, and honestly even like Tack McKinley, now they're edge rushers. Let's not get that twisted. Vic was technically an outside linebacker for Tennessee, but he's going to be an edge rusher. I mean, honestly, Nicholas Morrow and Nick Kukowski I thought have played well. Plus, Jonathan Abram is also like this uh, tight, a linebacker slash strong safety as well. I don't really think the Raiders need to go out and sign another linebacker because I think Littleton, he's going to play this week. So, so you don't miss anything, hit that big red button that says subscribe. Turn on your notifications. And what do I mean when I say turn on notifications? Look underneath the video. You see that bell? Click the bell. Click all. That way when I drop a video, you know how you get a text message? Like literally on your phone? When you click the notification bell, literally it says Las Vegas Raiders Report tells you the video. That way you don't miss anything. Free videos right to your phone or desktop. Subscribe, youtube.com slash Raiders Report. All right, this one's coming in from JWB Fresno 6 Will the Raiders cut Richie Incognito? It's an interesting question. So remember, the Raiders extended uh, Incognito in the offseason, I believe back in like, it was like December 30th. They gave him a two-year contract worth $14 million. It's definitely something you're going to consider, right? So how about this? If you cut Incognito this offseason, it saves you $6.35 million. When healthy. He's one of the best guards, and I actually think the entire NFL. His toughness, absolutely love it. The Achilles injury, scaring me. He's having foot surgery. He's done for the entire season. Plus, you also got to look at how well Denzel Goods played. You got to look at how well Gabe Jackson's played. And for me, you can either pay Richie Incognito 6.35, or if you're nervous about his ankle, or not ankle, Achilles, move on, save 6.35 million. It's definitely something to think about. So how about this? You know I was going to do it. Should the Raiders cut incognito? Why for yes or in for no? Since I like the question so much, JWB, I'm going to make it the pinned comment on today's video. So every person that comes across this, scroll on down. The very, very top comment is going to say, should the Raiders cut, cut incognito? Why for yes or in for no? All right, make sure you guys are using hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. What do you expect from Vic Beasley? I'm just hoping he gets into shape because when Vic's in shape, he's a good player. However, his entire career he has shown when he gets paid, he gets fat and lazy. I mean, it's simple. 2016, he had 15 and a half sacks. He gets paid, fat and lazy. Then this past year, had a pretty solid year, gets a one-year deal with the Titans, gets fat and lazy. So what do I expect from Vic? I just wanted to lose some weight. And if he can at least be extra depth and help us get after the quarterback, that would be great. 
All right, let's go to Manny Villegas. Should the Raiders draft offensive linemen in the draft? It literally comes down to what do you do with a guy like Gabe Jackson? Do you pay him $9.6 million or do you save $9.6 million? Do you bring back Trent Brown? $14.1 million basically is his contract. Richie Incognito. I mean, you have Colt Miller. He's a stud. Rodney Hudson is not moving either. But for me, it literally depends what you do with all these other guys on the offensive line. If you get rid of those three... Yeah, probably. You're going to have to draft an offensive lineman. If you say no, you're going to keep him. Well, then guess what? You don't need to. All right, let's go to Blanco because I can't pronounce your first name. Should we sign Earl Thomas? I'm just going to say no at this point. There's a reason why nobody at this point has signed Earl. I mean, think about it. <laughs> Tack McKinley failed two physicals, and there were still teams trying to get him over Earl Thomas. There's a reason why nobody wants Earl Thomas. It's the off-field drama. It's maybe he's not in good shape, but I'll tell you one thing at this point. No, I don't think the Raiders should go out and get Earl Thomas. Now, today's show is presented by Thrive Fantasy, and I want everyone to challenge me. How do you do that this week? You got to go to chatsports.com slash props. When you go to chatsports.com slash props, use promo code chat100, okay? You're going to get 100% deposit mass. So let's say you put down 50 bucks. You get 50 for free. If you want to deposit 100 bucks, you get $100 for free. Chatsports.com slash props. For those of you that are wondering what exactly Thrive Fantasy is, let me explain it to you a little bit easier. With Thrive, you can eliminate the countless hours of research and focus on only top-tier athletes with the biggest impact on the game. You're going to choose 10 out of 20 players. It's going to look like this, right? So choose 20, 10 out of 20 available player props to build your lineup. Each prop, which you can see to the right of me, is assigned okay, a fantasy value for both the over and the under based on how likely it is to hit. So you're going to pick 10 out of the 20, and then basically you can see the values. More likely, not likely. Cool. Plus, hey, whoever hits the most points, you can actually win some actual money. So in the tournament that I'm in, first place, you get 100 bucks, right? Is that what that says? No. First place gets 50 bucks. Second place, you get 30. Third place, you get 20. It costs only $3 to join. Like, that's all it costs. So you put $3 down, you can win 50 bucks. All I want you to do, challenge me. Bring it on. Thrive Challenge, chatsports.com slash props. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up. Email me, raiders at chatsports.com. Okay? Help me. Help the show. Support Thrive. I would appreciate it. And if you want to prove that you're smarter than me, well, come on. Prove it. We got 150 open spots, but they're going to go quick. Chatsports.com slash props. All right, y'all. Next questions. Let's get to it. Use hashtag graders or super chat. God, my nose is hella, hella itchy. Will we beat the Chiefs in the playoffs? If we play them again, I'm going to say yes because the Raiders have outplayed them in eight quarters. Derek Carr has outplayed Patrick Mahomes, and I think they're going to have a chip on their shoulder. And I think with a fully healthy defense, the Raiders have proven that they can beat the Chiefs. So you know what? Moise, Moses, what does it say? I can't read it. My eyes are horrible. Moises. <laughs> Sorry, brother. Yeah, I'm going to go, yeah. All right, we got this one coming in from Swedish Raider 411. Should we cut Marcus Mariota this offseason? Okay, and you use hashtag Raiders twice. Make sure you really got on. Um, I, uh, I, I'm going to say yes. I, I, I think at this point, the Marcus Mariota experiment has not worked out whatsoever. And for me... The reason why you brought in Mariota is because you had questions around Derek Carr. There should be no questions whatsoever now around Carr. You know he's going to come back. You know he's the quarterback for the Raiders. So for me, you cut Marcus Mariota, you can save a lot of money. In fact, you save $10.1 million by cutting Mariota. It costs absolutely nothing against the dead cap and move on from him because you shouldn't pay your second string quarterback $10.1 million. You shouldn't do it. He has no business getting paid that much. I mean... If you want to pay a backup quarterback, you can do it. Like three, four million. But no, Marcus Mariota, he's got to go. Type C for cut, type K for keep. I know there's going to be somebody that's still type. You know, K for keep, that's fine because, hey, you want to, you want the Mariota from Oregon. It's not there anymore. The Tennessee Titans, they moved on from him. Look how much better they were with Ryan Tannehill. And for me, all the reports this offseason about him not being ready, the injuries, him not being able to pick up Gruden's playbook, not worth it. Cut him. Save $10.1 million. Raider Rock, what's going on with Big Mo? So you're talking about Mo Hurst, who's still battling that ankle injury. I thought he was actually going to play last week. Unfortunately, he was unable to go. There hasn't been an update as I am filming today's show, so I'm hoping he can end up playing. But 
it does worry me the fact that the Raiders went out and signed two players that could play on the defensive line in Vic Beasley and Tack McKinley. But I want our best defensive tackle back because Malik Collins is just basically useless at this point. Let's go to SGO Canella. Do you think that the Raiders are using Ruggs correctly or should they get him more involved and draw more plays for him? I mean, for me, I think they are not using him correctly. But also, does Henry Ruggs deserve touches? Because when he's been targeted this year, he really hasn't been able to come down with the football. And for me, Derek Carr has been so good this year. He's making the right reads. I trust Derek. And the fact that they are targeting Nelson Aguilar, targeting Hunter Renfro, targeting all these other guys over Ruggs, that worries me a little bit. Now, I don't play Madden, but I do follow a lot of people that play Madden a lot. They tell me all the time Henry Ruggs is always on that playing video games. Maybe needs to not play Madden so much, and maybe needs to get into his playbook a little bit more. I'm not sure, but John Gruden has even come out and said that Ruggs needs to be better. So for me, I'm not going to put the blame on the Raiders. I'm going to put the blame on Ruggs. Now, a few more questions before I get out of here. I do want to remind you all, if you ever have an extra question, you want to talk Raiders, hit me up on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRens365. I do check my DMs literally every single day, and I'm always posting there as well. So if you need new Raiders updates, if you need something that's like this show, only on Instagram, follow me at MitchellRens365. All right, a few more questions. Darren Hernandez, do you think that the Raiders are capable of winning a Super Bowl this year? Be honest. If you would ask me at the beginning of the year, I would have said no. But now, yeah, I'm going to say yes for the simple fact of you hung with the Chiefs, the defending Super Bowl champs, and everyone out there would say, yes, I think the Chiefs are the favorite to win the Super Bowl. They probably are. But if you can outplay the Chiefs for eight quarters, why can't you win the Super Bowl? The defense just needs to be a little bit better. And I mean it. The offense is elite. One of the best offenses in the National Football League. Can the defense just not suck? Like, can you be top 20? Because if they're top 20, yes, absolutely. All right, let's go to, oh, man, name that Pokemon, Slowpoke. Where do you rank our offense in the league? I'll say five. I'm probably, eh, might even be four. So for me, I'm still going to put Kansas City's offense over the Raiders. Um, off the top of my head, I'm probably going to go with the Seahawks. I'll probably put the Packers up there as well. But, I mean, for me, the Cardinals probably have a better offense as well. I'm not putting the Ravens over the Raiders. The Raiders have a better offense. I'm going to say fourth. Fourth best offense in the National Football League. Last question from Raider26. With Carr aging a bit, what are your thoughts about trading up for maybe a Justin Fields in the draft and having him sit behind Carr for a bit? If you're going to trade up for Justin Fields where the Raiders draft right now, you basically got to give up two first-round picks, a second-round pick, because the Raiders are going to be in the 20s. Think about that. Justin Fields is going to top three. I'm not giving up two first-round picks, a second-round pick for Justin Fields. I think Justin Fields is going to be a good quarterback, but Derek Carr's 30 years old. He's still got 10 years left in today's NFL. No, I'm not trading up for Justin Fields.